It's another hot day in the Kalahari Desert, and water is scarce. While an optimistic vulture circles the sky, disappointed and thirsty wildebeest below him paw the hard ground, desperate for moisture of any sort. But there is no water to be found today. A white-backed vulture watches a wildebeest keenly. Who knows what today will bring? Tensions run high in the extreme heat, with temperatures soaring up to almost 50 degrees Celsius in the hottest months. With the dry, parched earth behind them, they continue their search for water. of death is more constant than at any other time. Circling vultures having spotted the carcass start to descend to claim their share. An old beast has succumbed to the elements. The absence of life-giving water has taken the ultimate toll. Without any predators nearby to chase them off the carcass, they enjoy this rare feast. Finally, their search has paid off. Man-made waterholes give the animals a better chance for survival in the park and have put an end to those arduous migrations of the past. Even so, there's no guarantee that these waterholes won't dry up during the driest of seasons. The first to arrive at the waterhole this morning are a large flock of Namaqua sand grouse. Well aware of the dangers every time they arrive at the waterholes, the Namaqua grouse nervously approach, constantly on the lookout for an aerial attack. They know that death is just a wing beat away. With a myriad of birds like Cape Sparrows, shaft tail Wider and red-headed finches visiting the waterhole throughout the day, they all share that common fear. Be alert or be eaten. It's the Lana Falcon who is causing the unease. Lana falcons hunt small birds, and this falcon chooses to be near the waterhole, 
not only because of his thirst. This is his hunting ground. To survive, the birds must drink, no matter how great the risk. As sure as death is always near, so is birth and the continuous regeneration of life. This is the balance of nature. The newborn calf needs to find his feet quickly if he is to survive. With the reassurance and protection of the herd, he soon finds his way. The herd patiently waits while the newest member of the family finds that much needed first drink. Like ants the world over, they nudge and nuzzle him and make a fuss of the new calf, which soon makes him feel relaxed and at home. After his initiation into the herd, he no longer has doubts about where he belongs. With the scent of a newborn still fresh in the area, they need to move on. At this vulnerable stage in the young wildebeest's life, being spotted by a predator would be fatal. The heat intensifies as the drought bites deep. Springbok, etched like rock paintings into the barren landscape, search for nourishing shoots. Choking dust swirls as even these white-browed weavers lift their wings to find the tiniest breeze to cool them. With a warm Namib wind blowing in from the east, their efforts seem to be in vain. Mirages shimmer in the heat across the landscape. This squirrel, like the indomitable spirit of nature, never gives up. He has found green shoots under the driest branches. His enterprise is rewarded and he stands under the shade of a fallen camel thorn tree to enjoy his spoils. Seemingly having it all worked out, he takes from his bounty time and again, hoping it and other food sources will sustain them until the rains arrive. While he stands guard, she excavates the burrow in preparation for her unborn young. Cobra is on the hunt, systematically checking the burrows, hoping for newborn or young ground squirrel to feed on. Hunting out in the open has its dangers, and not being at the top of the food chain, they too are hunted. It will be wise to seek cover. Secretary birds patrol these deserts, constantly on the search for their slithery prey as they scan the plains. 
The cobra's only defense is not to be spotted. Sharing the concern of the Cape Cobra, this well-fed puff adder also wastes no time in retreating to the safety of cover. On the wild plains and dunes of the Kalahari, the hunter can easily become the hunted. The springbok continue their search for nutrients. With very little to be had, they manage not only to survive, they seem to be quite happy and healthy in this arid environment. Dry grass and camel thorn leaves will have to do until the next rains arrive. Cape foxes are enjoying some playful family time in the cool morning before mum and dad go off on their daily search for food. Finding himself alone, he decides to do a little exploring. With the discomfort of feeling vulnerable, he decides that being near the den is a far safer option. The search for water goes on relentlessly. And it's finally rewarded in a spectacular display of color and light, African style. In nature, the demise of one gives life to another. The cheetah cubs are lucky today. Mother has managed a successful hunt. She's brought down a large male springbok, and for a change, she and the cubs have gorged themselves. Feeding out in the open like this is an invitation for scavengers. Jackals and vultures start to gather and patiently wait. Cheetahs are not always successful hunters, so when they have made a kill, they eat fast, as their prize is so often stolen by larger predators. With one last glance, the herd once again moves on. Ever aware of the threat and not knowing when she will strike again. Hunger forces the jackals to be reckless. Becoming impatient, they start to circle. With the smell of blood keeping them focused, they start to taunt the cheetah. The battle for food between two old enemies starts to play itself out. Bravely harassing the cheetah, this jackal is relentless in his quest to see the cheetah off the kill.
As more jackals arrive, the irritation of the cheetahs begins to show. With the pressure now becoming more intense, she decides that it's time to move on. After hours of patiently waiting and risking their lives, the jackals finally take their place at the carcass. They waste no time tearing at the flesh. Having feasted well and with dignity intact, they retreat to cover where they can have a well-deserved rest. The vultures turn at last. The white-backed vultures clean the carcass down, but they too have to bow down to their superior. Like the chief undertaker, the enormous lappet-faced vulture takes center stage. Satisfied that he can eat no more, he steps aside for the others to take their turn. By the end of today, this carcass will be bare. By first light tomorrow, no trace of this event will remain. After the undignified squabble for meat and scraps, nature draws a discreet and exquisite curtain over the harsh realities of survival. Nutrients come in all shapes and sizes. As the lion gets nourishment from its many different prey, their byproducts create food for others. These droppings have become a welcome feast for these dung beetles and many others. Nature once again demonstrates its natural resilience. There's no waste in this land. Any form of moisture is welcome in these dry, dusty conditions. There is turmoil in this red hearted beast's family today. A younger, stronger male has mounted a challenge and won. The older male, however, is battling to come to terms with his loss, and he hangs around trying to hold on to his family. of numerous warnings from the new male, his patience rapidly begins to wear out. Finally, his 
patience runs out and the chase begins. Exhausted and desperately seeking refuge from the determined onslaught of the stronger male, he seeks refuge under the branches of a dead thorn tree, hoping that this will put an end to his nightmare. However, after a 20-minute rest in the shade and the drama seemingly over, he moves in to investigate. His determination to rid himself of competition is unparalleled, and he once again drives home his attack. Desperately seeking some form of distraction, he tries to use the wildebeest to confuse the chaser but to no avail. It seems there will only be one outcome for this battle today. With the temperatures hovering around 40 degrees at this time of year, it still takes over an hour for this older male to be overcome by exhaustion, finally giving in to his horrific fate and paying the ultimate price. Just when nature shows herself at her most brutal, she can transform into her most charming. Three-month-old lion cubs are finding their feet. Following in their proud mother's footsteps, they are learning what it means to be a lion. Sometimes, however, even the proudest future king of the beasts needs a bit of help. The time has come for mum to introduce her cubs to the pride, where they will get much needed protection. They are a formidable force that rule this western boundary of the park. Curious cubs are still very young, though. It isn't long before they need a rest and a drink in the shade. Mum seldom rests, even in moments as peaceful as these. She keeps a constant, watchful eye for any sign of danger. Already at this young age, there is competition for food, something that will be constant throughout their lives.
tummy's full and having rested a bit, the cubs can't resist using mum's tail as a distraction. Being alone with three vulnerable cubs has its dangers. Finding her pride soon is vital to their survival. This is her pride. Having failed the hunt the night before, they make their way to the waterhole. After a long drink, their thirst satisfied, they slink away into the bush. The pride will more than likely spend the day sleeping under a shady tree in true lion fashion. Pride male has picked up an unfamiliar scent and goes to investigate. He is a large male, strong, and still very capable of protecting his pride. Like a battered warrior, he carries his scars like trophies. Two brazen young males now in their prime are searching for one thing, a pride they can make their own. It is their scent that the older male has picked up. Will the resident male's experience be enough to see off a challenge by these two young brothers? If he doesn't secure a victory over these two challengers, the life of his three-month-old cubs will be short-lived. One thing is certain, this challenge will take place. This young male lion has been ousted from his pride. With a seemingly bleak future, he begins a new phase in his life. He now faces a lonely existence until he too, one day, will come of age. He too will look for a pride of his own, to pass his genes on and continue the rhythm that has been for thousands of years.
Finally, the storm clouds start to build overhead. Soon, the seasonal rain that all have been waiting for will begin. have arrived. Trees bow down in gratitude as they are drenched to the roots. Seemingly oblivious to the rain, these lions are in the process of mating. Copulating 20 to 40 times a day, lasting several days, they are likely to forego eating over this time. These two lost and bewildered eland calves are in easy reach of the two lions. Fortunately for them, the lion's priorities lie elsewhere. For now. Nervous and confused, they seek protection from a male oryx, while frantically one of the eland mothers searches for her lost calf. Feeling uncomfortable with his proximity to the lions, this oryx decides to put some distance between himself and the predators, leaving the calves vulnerable once more. Finally, the eland mothers reunite with their calves. Luck has dealt its hand today. Relief and excitement showing, they greet and reassure their young. Noticing the lions in the near distance, they waste little time and make a hasty retreat to the safety of the dunes. The soaking rain starts to fall over vast areas of the Kalahari. descends over the Kalahari Desert as night falls once again. After a long dry season, relaxed springbok and wildebeest mingle together. They are all here for the rich pickings. With the rain now falling and the warm Kalahari sun, it's not long before new carpets of green start to cover the dry sandy riverbed.
young Oryx male is bitten by spring fever. His frisky chase upsets the older guard, and a seasoned wildebeest soon puts him in his place. Peace and order restored, they continue to graze and mingle, ever watchful for the hunters that lurk in this territory. Pools of water are plentiful across the Kalahari now. Juvenile ostriches peck at the ground, lifting precious minerals from the damp soil. Having satisfied their thirst, they once again head back to the dunes. Having it all to herself, this oryx makes quick work of this puddle of water. The sun rises over a transformed Kalahari. After two weeks of good rain and warm Kalahari sun, the transformation is nothing less than spectacular. Flowers of many different colours bloom with luscious delight after hibernating in the hot, dry sand. The green paradise is unrecognisable from the harsh desert of the dry season. With water now abundant throughout the park, the long treks between good grazing and water are over for a short while. With the tensions of the dry season now past, they graze at leisure, enjoying this abundant time of year. Brown-veined white butterflies have a burst migration this time of year. A dispersal mechanism which relieves overcrowding in a single area and by doing so, spreads the progeny all over. Originating in the Kalahari, they migrate east. Maturing as they travel, their sole purpose is to find a mate and lay eggs before they die. Chested snake eagle watches nature's dramatic display from above. The banquet of butterflies seems to be provided just for him. 
nature has opened her arms and filled this world with beauty and bounty. The beauty of this landscape in the rainy season is beyond compare. In complete contrast to the dry season, rainbows and flowing grass plains decorate the savanna as more storms roll across the heavens. This is the green Kalahari. For about a month of the year, this normally dry, dusty landscape resembles that of nothing less than a Garden of Eden. The rain has brought so much with it that even the soil is alive with goodness. Oryx pour at the ground to release the much needed nutrients, licking the rich minerals hidden in the wet soil. Dominant animals getting the choicest patches. Spring has infused nature's creatures with high spirits. Three young cheetah cubs play happily in the morning sun. Mother, on the other hand, has more serious business. She needs to hunt and feed her family. Determined, she sets off along the riverbed in search of prey. Her cubs follow her closely, alert and watchful now. They are learning her skills bit by bit each day. Skills that will ensure their own survival in the future. Her hunting tactics are simple. She walks south along the riverbed, constantly scanning ahead for her quarry. Being diurnal, cheetah have to hunt in the daytime, unlike the other cats who have the choice of night or daytime hunting. This also renders the cheetah vulnerable at night to its feline enemies, none of which she is able to overpower. Escape would be her only option. With the grass now as tall as her in places, it offers great cover to sneak up on any unsuspecting prey. Having rested and searched the riverbed for most of the morning, she finally spots what she has been searching for a lone male springbuck. Unsuspecting, he goes about his business, unaware that he is now actively being stalked. With the long grass, she hardly needs to crouch on her approach to within the strike zone. The springbuck senses something, but dismisses it and goes back to grazing. With the cheetah now in the strike zone, the springbuck has made a fatal mistake.
Seconds later, the mother has brought down her prey. The cubs run to join her. These cubs won't be provided for for much longer, as they are on the verge of adulthood and will soon have to hunt for themselves. Dragging their kill into the shade and out of the eye of the scavenger, they will feed well today. On average, 50% of cheetah hunts end in failure. This mother has just lost out to a steenbuck. As small as it may seem, it would have still provided a well-needed meal for this cheetah family, as they have not eaten in a number of days now. Disappointed, she returns to her hungry cubs. Ever watchful for an opportunity, she continues to scan for prey. She knows if she grows too weak, her chances of feeding her cubs will start becoming ever more critical. She needs to kill soon. While taking a break, her cubs use this opportunity to play. Hunger now saps them of their energy and excitement, causing them to be listless in their efforts. Hoping to make a kill before dark, the mother sets off down the riverbed once again. Unaware that they are heading straight into a leopard's territory, they continue on. Suddenly, the hunter becomes the hunted. The leopard moves in closer. Oblivious to what is unfolding behind her, the cheetah mother moves on, not knowing that her cubs are now in great danger. The leopard starts to stalk the cubs. Fortunately, they spot her, breaking the element of surprise. Even though she could still catch and kill these two young cubs, she decides to spare them. For what reason, only she will know. This seasoned alpha male is a prized specimen of his species. He is the head of his herd. Bowing to his authority, the younger males move off as he approaches. One of the males decides it's time to mount a challenge, as he wants this harem of females now.
The dominant male makes quick work of his challenger and resumes his duties as the head male. This female is ready to mate. With an air of arrogance, or maybe just stubbornness, she seems to be playing hard to get. Not letting up, he continues his pursuit. After the right amount of persuasion, she is finally on her feet. All males will pass their genes on as much as possible before they are challenged and beaten. This ensures that the gene pool stays diverse and the population, more importantly, stays strong. Soon, he will be back to challenge again. The unmistakable call of the wattled starling heralds the dawn of a new day. With the starling being a gregarious bird, they often form large flocks similar to those of the sociable weaver. Their nesting, however, isn't similar at all. And nowhere is coexistence demonstrated more spectacularly than in one of the largest bird's nests on the planet. Like an enormous block of apartments, the sociable weavers build their nests alongside one another to form an intricate hive of nests. With a constant chattering, they go about building and maintaining. These weaver colonies may be active across several generations, sometimes lasting over a hundred years, making it very necessary to keep these homes in shape. This waterhole is teeming with bird life. They swoop in, drinking fast, and then flying off again, with the constant fear of being hunted. The Lana Falcon is in the skies again. With target in sight, she dives. Sweeping by, she passes her kill to her young and flies off to hunt again. Unlike the falcon, these barn owls being hunters of the night spend most of the day sleeping and resting, saving their energies for the night hunt. Nearby, as the sun begins to set, the tree rats are starting to surface. This is what the barn owl is waiting for. Oblivious to the owls in their neighborhood, they go about at their fast pace gnawing at the acacia bark. They will have to be on their guard tonight as the owls will appear like silent stealth fighters out of nowhere.
days of plenty will turn back into the days of want. Nowhere is the cycle of life more clearly seen than in nature. And nowhere is nature's message clearer than in the wilds of Africa. The struggle for survival will never end. The wildebeest will have to go on the move again in their search for water. They will once again nervously attend the isolated water holes where they know predators are lurking. With the tall grass now gone, the cheetah's hunting tactics too must once again change. The sands of the desert bind every creature and plant together, locked in an intricate rhythm of survival. From the most noble creatures to the tiniest of insects, they accept her harsh decrees. They enjoy her abundance and they endure her deprivation. Only humans alter the perfect balance of the natural world. It is up to us, the human animals, to allow nature to be free to heal herself. If we don't, we may lose all the lessons she has to teach us in the natural world. And in the process, we'll lose more than just ourselves or the animals we've grown used to seeing. We will lose our very souls.